winch is looking okay so far. So far. Let's hope it stays that way, right? Yeah. It's usually, I think they said 3,000, 3,400. It starts acting, acting up a little bit. So, mm. just to have another 1,000 meters before, or 700 meters before it starts acting up. Okay. Oh no, I'm starting to get the terminal yawns back here. It's getting close to our bedtimes. I know, I'm trying to stay awake up here too. Just watching the winch. <laughs> so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it can be a little tedious sometimes, but yeah. critical. <laughs> say if I was you, I would uh, I'd be in bed. <laughs> so don't blame you. Yeah, I'll be headed that way whenever I'm ready for it. Hmm. Yeah, this winch isn't as bad. I've seen some other ones that are worse, and you have to slow it down the whole time. Oh, it no. skips every single time for whatever reason. Jeez. I've seen one where it double wrapped itself for some reason. I've never seen it do it before again, but I've seen it double wrap itself. That doesn't sound like, that no. doesn't sound great for the cable. No, nope, mm -hmm. we had to cut it. <laughs> Ooh, yikes. It's honestly amazing this the way the whole system is that it can automate this fine of like a an alignment. It's the level one, so see that little blue thing that's down yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all it does is just pulls it along and every time it feels yeah. like it's getting pulled on a little bit it moves over yeah. itself. That's crazy. And I'm, I've seen one where it doesn't just stop, it just keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, no. it pulled a wire all the way across oh, and it's my gosh. like oh. I've seen all kind of crazy stuff. I was on the Ravel in 2013. It's my first cruise, and uh, one of the one of the dredges we put down, um, it got stuck. Oh my gosh! Wow. And well, we had a few stuck dredges uh, on that one, but we managed somehow to rescue them all. Like, wow. It was one of those unusual ones where we uh, something like 45 dredges and never lost a dredge. Oh man. Yeah. How deep was it when it got caught up or lost? Uh, I don't. Oh, I don't really remember anymore. Okay. But we would have been somewhere between uh, probably two and three thousand okay. meters. So, okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, geochemists, we like our deep dredges. Yeah. Deep sampling. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, I got stuck for a while, and the marine techs were finally able to unstick it. We brought up the bag. I don't remember if it had anything in it or not, but yeah. there was a clear kink in the cable, like a meter or two above the bag. So, Oof, um, man. yeah, we had to switch over to transit mapping for a while, and uh, the techs had to go, like, oh, bring out this whole rig to uh, cut that part of the cable off and reattach, uh, reattach the, the the end thing on it. Yeah. So, wow. It's good as new, but um, wow. we were pretty concerned for a while. Yeah. No, I bet. I bet. I heard a story about um, one of the boats at, or actually it's part of the USF's College of Marine Science. There's a group that has this camera tow sled oh, that cool. they use for like fish surveys. And on t apparently they lost it on two separate occasions. Like it's, I don't, I don't remember how, but like they've had to get on one, at least on one occasion, like an ROV to go down and get it. But mm. it thankfully is on the West Florida shelf, which is very shallow. Um, but yeah, I thought that was crazy that they just completely lost it. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're doing a little house cleaning up in here. Housekeeping. Yeah. That's what the funny noise is probably coming across in our mics. <laughs> What'd you spill? But, so you mentioned about missing the tow set. I've seen another boat, a company I worked for, they had actually lost, uh, I can't say the name because I don't want to, <laughs> no, I don't want to throw them underneath the bus. But anyways, they lost the ROV. 
Oof. A whole ROV. So you oh imagine. Oh my gosh. And so we were part of the retrieval team and we ended up finding it. I think they said 10 miles from original spot oh it was lost. Wow. So it literally drifted at the bottom and just rolled <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> Oh, that sounds awful. So, and what caused it to like get dis like uh, disconnected? So, what they think happened is that uh, it got caught up on something, uh -huh. and the cable, the cable somehow snapped. We really don't know how, but the cables are thick. The ones I'm used to, they're, they're a lot thicker than the Hercules and okay. the Atlanta cables. They're they're a lot thicker. Yeah. And so it's kind of crazy to think about, hey, a cable that thick snapping at only like maybe 2,000 meters. Yeah. Uh, so something had to really be pulling on it for wow. it to be snapping on it. Um, and so I just, wow. I remember hearing about it and they're like, oh, all right, we're going to do really retrieval for us. And we had to stop what we're doing and go find the, the ROV. Jeez. <laughs> That's a miracle y'all found it. Yeah. Well, the, the only reason why we found it is because we were looking around the area where it was um, lost and you just see a trail. Oh my gosh. The, oh no. <laughs> the tumbles trail. Do you saw a tumble, the tumble trail? So it, it was pretty <laughs> funny to see it happen and we're just like, man. man. Oh, that's scary. That's, that's crazy. Uh, like it's frightening because of just how expensive and complex that machinery is to lose. Oh yeah. But the fact that it went 10 miles and you could trace it by basically bioturbation except robot the robot version just did the trackway it left <laughs> uh, i mean was that rov even usable after that that's a lot of tumbling <laughs> yeah. i don't know i just remember retrieving it we because we had a uh, we had an industrial crane on it uh, on the on the on the ship we were on uh -huh. and uh we just and we just uh what Me also. Oh, um. <laughs> that is gross. Who 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 did that? I don't understand. <laughs> when I chew my gum, I just keep it in my pocket with the wrapper. I don't just. <laughs> That's weird. I'm gonna throw it away. That's gonna bug me. Okay, front row shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, back row will uh, have its own share of sh shenanigans the rest of this expedition. <laughs> it's always been where the real party's at, up there in the front row. True. I hope to make it up there one day. <laughs> Dude, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Speaking of um, high stakes science, the other day I was watching a really good documentary about, actually it was on the flight over here, it was a documentary about the James Webb Telescope. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And just watching, I mean, like, you know, the, the years that went into that, I just cannot imagine the anxiety of the all the scientists and engineers the day that thing went up. And I mean, that those days it took for it to completely get, you know, yeah. unfolded and into position. It's just like, man, I don't know. Cause like with the Hubble, there was, you know, the fatal error, but they were able to go and fix it. But with this one, it's like, oh my gosh. It's too far out. Crazy. I just, yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah, after that launch, uh, astronomy Twitter was just like, none of them could sit still, poor folks, because, yeah. you know, there's just all of that tension, as you're saying, about mm -hmm. making sure that it got completely unfurled and everything. Because that, that telescope has so many, like, uh, moving parts, points yeah. of failure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, what just, beautiful I, images, though. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh yeah. yeah. Worth worth the long wait. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how many years it was over schedule. It was like a like lot. ten years over schedule something or something. Like that. I think so yeah. Way over budget too, but yeah. you know that's that's not unheard of. It's pretty yeah. common. <laughs> if it's a government funded project, it's a guarantee. <laughs> yeah, like the rail, right? Come on. Like the rail. Oh, that one you started. We don't even get any good images out of that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you are in one of those situations uh, on the seabed, at some point, sometimes you have to uh, sacrifice your vehicle or your dredge or whatever in order to preserve the cable. <laughs> Although with the instrumentation, you know, ROVs, ideally you want both. Like, how do you even, like, 
Okay, so if you found an ROV with an ROV, how do you get the uh, disabled ROV back up on deck? We had actually, a, like I was telling Catalina, we had an industrial crane on the ship because oh, okay. we were on a work vessel. So we were, we, were, we were able to retrieve like heavy equipment, stuff like that from the bottom. And earlier when they were talking about uh, retrieving some of the, some of the uh, Koga uh, earlier, I was like, I was thinking about that and I was like, man, I couldn't imagine all the logistics and stuff like that that has to go into it. And then all the engineering, because it's not just like going in there and putting straps on a piece of metal and just or a piece of the ship and pulling it up. No, it's a lot of logistics because you got to contribute coming up with it from 5,000 meters, 6,000 meters almost, strapping it up perfectly. That way it doesn't fall off or doesn't lean one way or another. Because if it does lean one way or another, when you pull it up, it's going to be dangerous and, mm -hmm. you know, it's high risk of hitting something, hitting someone or, you know, <laughs> destroying the ship. There's just, just a lot to it. And I, we've, we've done like like 100 yard jumper, uh, jumper pipe uh, retrievals and stuff like that. And that, that's pretty crazy in itself to do, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've had one instance where one of those jumpers, um, they actually, what a, what a jumper is, it just goes from one side of the well to to a skid or something like that, or, you know, some, something that it's connected to the well to. And we've had one instance where the jumper actually was, went from horizontal to vertical. And, you know, that was a hundred yard pipe just in the middle of the water. There was nothing we could have done. And we had to actually get two ROVs down there to actually hook it back up and bring it back up to the crane to the proper <laughs> positioning oh that, my we could, gosh. that we can bring it back onto the vessel on yeah. the back of the vessel so are you applying for the job to bring it back up or are you not applying mm -hmm. for the job <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, so but it's uh, it's always fun to it, it, it's it's sketchy and so it's always kind of interesting seeing the engineers and stuff like that people trying to do it but it's just it's not it, it's pretty stressful too at the same time because then you got to worry about like hey is that thing gonna come hit the ship <laughs> if it does what happened <laughs> amber i i waited for three requests to come in um for the winch cam uh i can continue to you know <laughs> to shut them down or uh you know i, I don't know this is this is what the internet is asking for. <laughs> The Winch Cam fan club has arrived, <laughs> and uh, we are very happy to have you guys here. We're <laughs> I think we're turning into Winch fans, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we get it on the big screen in here, so it's kind of nice. True. Yeah. They can zoom in on the uh, control van screen. Hey, ask and you oh shall receive. Oh, my goodness. Thanks, Amber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's too good. She's too good to you all, to the Internet. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope we never lose Hercules and Argus again. It's uh, those are, I'm, I wasn't there, but I imagine that was a pretty stressful moment. And uh, glad you got them back safely. Sorry, sorry. That was you don't apologize, oh, yeah, <laughs> Sing to us. Let's go. <laughs> there should be a blue water concert before on the eight to twelve watch. Before this dive is over, we're doing a blue water concert, and everyone <laughs> on watch is singing, including Robert. He's going to be our he's going to be our main show. He's does he's not listening again. He's off the headset. Did I miss anything on uh, pop up in front of the camera while I was gone? Not really. No, I think we just mostly talked about the winch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. Some of our viewers want to know where they can find, they miss some of these dives. They want to know where they can find it. Uh, you know, well, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait a while. Uh, for those videos to be released, um, full videos, but uh, we'll be giving, uh, putting highlights out on YouTube shortly. Imagine within the next couple of days, and and uh, we hope you'll tune into that.
Oh, the internet's going wild for the winch. <laughs> so excited. We love you guys. Thank you for following along. Catalina, will we be uh, will we be doing some more? Uh, excuse me if I'm interrupting, but mm -mm. we'll be doing some more mapping uh, on our way to the dive site tomorrow morning. Or since yeah. we, yeah, yep, yep, okay. on every transit. Every transit. So we'll make a new line. We'll pick a new unmapped yeah. line, and yeah. awesome. Yeah, because I think between this dive and the previous one, we had mapped. I don't know if it's the next seamount we're going to. It's kind of northwest from where we currently are sitting. Um, but even if we do head up that same way, we can always like basically take a similar heading, just like slightly offset and fill in more on yeah. that area. Yep. Awesome. So opportunistic mapping. Yeah, I think Renny said, I don't remember what time I was talking to him, but he's, he mentioned something recently about hoping to get another pass over that seamount. So yeah. um, it was either last night or this morning. So I don't know if we did get that extra pass in. Yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah. Trying to fill in all the gaps so we can plan out our next dive For as best sure. as we can. Yeah, these small these these uh, small sea mounts are going to be kind of interesting because I they they sit at a point where two hot spot well, presumed hot spot tracks uh, overlap. What's that? Um, awesome. And. Uh, I have no idea if these belong to the Hawaiian Emperor chain or uh, if they're related to uh, the Lilio Kalani chain. Right at that intersection. We'll so, find out. Yeah, we'll find out. Isotope stories. Yes. Hawaii Emperor or Lilio Kalani. I was like, gonna get a good few verses out of that, I think. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Somebody says, I would be happy to watch the galley cam. Oh, oh, yeah. We do not have cameras in the galley. There's nothing happening there right now. Nope. And it's that time of night where uh, folks are on watch, but at a uh, watch change at midnight, a few of us will trickle in there and then you know, get something to eat and drink and then uh, go fall into bed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's been a good long day. It has been. I actually woke up before my alarm today and I have no idea why. <laughs> oh. I have to say sleeping in a um sleeping in the top bunk in these boats is quite the challenge in the morning. <laughs> I feel like I'm lucky that I haven't fallen out trying to get oh, yeah, down please yet. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I had a top bunk last year and uh, just, yeah, trying to get up when it's dark out and, uh, you know, yeah. your uh, your roommate's uh, sleeping. Yeah. Yeah, you got to get really good with uh, knowing where exactly to place your foot. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I have a ladder on mine. I don't know if it's the same on everyone, but... Um, I don't think it is. Okay. I, I would just climb up from the, uh, the footboard. Okay. Kind of... Yeah. 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 But yeah, even that climbing down like a perfectly vertical ladder, it's like, whoo, you got to get your foot just right or else you just whoo, fall oh, down. No. Yeah. <laughs> be careful. Catalina is an amazing athlete, so I, I trust she'll be safe, but uh, yeah, no no falling, no falling on board. I'll do my best. No fall, no hooli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember being downstairs last year uh, at the end of the expedition season and and just trying to try, there were only two of us and two bunks, like two bunk beds, top and bottom. So I slept on bottom most of the time, but then I was like, oh, I wonder what it's like up top. 
And then, yeah, only one time trying to get up there and get down. I'm, for those curious on the internet, I'm about six foot eight, <laughs> 260 pounds. So, yep, yeah, that was that would be a bit no, of a no more top bunking for me. <laughs> totally fair. I was going to say, are you getting OK sleep and considering this, the length of the bunks? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the bed, you know, I've got uh, my bed extends like off the end of my bed, which is where my feet and lower half of my legs are <laughs> when I'm sleeping. They're uh, they're kind of in the zone where when when Hans Hans and Hans von Tilburg and I are, are roommates and he's an amazing roommate, but we're on different watches and we're moving in and out of the room at different times. So um, however you want to look at it, Hans sometimes runs into me. I sometimes kick Hans, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's all good. It's all good. No, I'm getting pretty pretty great sleep at sea. I I uh, think I probably sleep better at sea than I do Same. on land. Hmm. It's always a little rough getting back on the mainland for the first week or two because you know you get you get so used to sleeping with you know the ship moving and kind of rocking you and uh, yeah <laughs> yeah don't you don't get that at home. No, I feel like you know held by the ocean, so it's uh, yeah. It's a nice feeling. It's hard for a big guy like me to feel uh, feel held like that. So I'll take it. Take that love <laughs> totally. from the ocean for sure. I've been curious. I, would, I really want to see. I hope I get the opportunity to see the Hokulea up close one day. Come what on. is the, what is the birthing situation like on there? How do you guys? How does <laughs> that work? Oh, thank you for asking about Hokulea. Yeah. So um, uh, on top of both of the halls, um, which is where all our stores go, is in the halls, uh, down the hatches. The hatches close, they secure, and uh, over each bulkhead, in between what we call the iaco, the beams mm -hmm. that connect the two halls, uh, is a birthing station on the hall. So we put a small ply board and a little camping mat, uh, or yoga mat kind, on, the, on top of that board, and then uh, that space is about six feet long. Wow. So wow. Uh, if I can get a space on deck where I'm not in the way or on the front netting uh, or on the trampoline, what we call the trampoline in the back, then uh, I'll try to snag one of those spots. But okay. uh, yeah, while we're at sea and we're often kind of hot bunking with different watches and crawling in and out of those, is it's pretty funny. Most wow. of the other crew members hmm. do it pretty without any problems, but uh, it's always a good show. and when I'm trying to get in or out of those oh, no. those bunks. Yeah, it's a good time. And you will have to come. Uh, you'll have to come uh, sailing, <laughs> get Catalina Navigator. <laughs> There's no technology, so nothing to stress out. You just have to memorize <laughs> all of the stars. Yeah, just memorize oh. all the stars. And yeah. calibrate you. your shaka. <laughs> yeah. No, I really do. I hope I get the privilege to see it one day. I've heard so much about it. So. It's really cool. It's we, a really special event when they uh, when uh, they sail into the uh, one of the islands. So cool. Absolutely. I forget which bay Hokulea usually sails into. It's yeah. like Ola Moana Beach Park or something. Yeah. So when uh, after returning from Worldwide Voyage, came right into uh, right into Ala Moana Boat Harbor and okay. right there. Uh, right there next to what we now call Magic Island, but whose place name is Kalia. And uh, yeah, amazing reception after Worldwide Voyage. And um, it's a yeah. beautiful part of the South Shore there. Yeah, always, always nice uh, when we come home uh, and when we're coming to port around the world. I believe they're um, in Eureka, Northern California, right now, and they just settled in uh, today and going to be giving some canoe tours there. So if you're listening in, you're from Northern California. Uh, they're in Eureka now. We'll be in San Francisco for a big party in about a week. Um, <laughs> so mark your calendars. I think that's uh, September 24th or something along those lines. Uh, all our Hawaiian friends and family in San Francisco, as well as uh, everyone in the community, we'd love to have them come out. And uh, Yeah, absolutely. And for sure, Catalina, we'd be honored to have you come visit Hokulea and sail with us. Oh, well, she really could just sweet. navigate us there. Just, yep. <laughs> come on. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds really amazing. It's it's such a cool canoe. Uh, she's an uh, incredibly powerful, beautiful canoe. That's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah, I wish all the crew members best of luck. I know... Uh, 
our captains and navigators and family, Nainoa and Bruce, leading uh, as well as our voyaging director, Lehua Kamalu, they're just leading an amazing crew sailing down the west coast of the continent at the moment. And uh, we appreciate them for taking such good care of Hokulea and over so many years, so many voyages. This is Hokulea's 15th major voyage and actually her longest one yet. A lot of people don't realize that. She really? did sail around the world, but it's a longer to circumnavigate the Pacific. There's more hmm. miles, there's more wow. port stops, there's uh, more indigenous communities, there's more <laughs> everything trying to make it around the Pacific. People can probably imagine that if you kind of hover above Hawaii and just zoom out into space, uh, all you see is Hawaii and a vast Pacific Ocean for pretty much the whole way out until you see the whole yep. earth. Yeah, yep, yeah. Dr. Val's got it up yeah. on the iPad now. So it makes sense that that's a longer journey. It's an incredibly, incredibly oh. long journey. So it's, uh, yeah, what a uh, what a cool Moana Nui Akea. We'll bring the, see the canoes. Actually, sail plans have been changed to, for the canoes to be able to come home for Maui, for Lahaina mm -hmm. community, um, take care of, uh, of that community, uh, and then uh, set sail again uh, sometime early next year. Uh, so sail plans slightly modified and changed, but, uh, but yeah, we're, uh, we're thankful for, thankful for that canoe and all that she means to, uh, to the Hawaiians and Hawaiian islands and, and to the world. Mm -hmm. uh, really cool voyage. Moana Nui Akea, you can find out more, hokulea.com, wa'ahonua, w-a-a-h-o-n-u-a.com. Uh, a lot of cool information about about the canoe, its history, its current voyage. So just like Nautilus, amazing uh, ocean voyagers, scientists, really diverse, inclusive uh, crew. People from all over the Pacific and the world have joined the crew over the years. So yeah. Very much so. We love it when people come to visit. Have you ever done the, uh, the paddle race from Molokai to Oahu? I have not, I have not, but I need to because I need to get in, back into shape. But yeah, that's a, uh, that's a lot of fun. Kaivi Channel is, uh, is an awesome body of water. Yeah. yeah, one of my crewmates from one of the Falcourt cruises we did in 2017 did that race, uh, part of it. By the time, uh, uh, by the time his team got back to to shore, we realized he wasn't in the canoe. His he was working so hard paddling that uh, even though he had trained the entire time we were at sea to do this, uh, yeah, his arms just couldn't do it. Oh, so no. they, they had to swap out some people on the team. Yeah, crew change. Uh, yeah. We can do that these days. All of our all of our uh, canoe races come with escort boats, but. Uh, yeah, some of our crew members on Hokulea remember the days when you would paddle that race, no escort boats, no crew change. It's all you. <laughs> you. You make it or you don't. <laughs> yeah, pretty, no, he, he tried you know, really, really hard. Pretty and, awesome. Uh, yeah. But no, he, give it he, all, he, he give still it all you got. Yeah, he took pride in what he was able to accomplish on that, so it's deserved. I definitely could not do that without <laughs> a lot more uh, training. <laughs> I do love paddling, but... Uh, yeah, a race across a, a, a channel between two islands is a little more than I could handle. <laughs> At least right now. But it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun watching the canoes come in from that race. Yeah, and, always fun to greet them on the beach over our, yeah, after all, that all long Yeah, all sorts paddle. of friends and family showing up. Just another reason to potty in Hawaii. <laughs> All right, we're a little bit under 3,500 meters and 10 minutes left in this watch. Oh, <laughs> we did it. Almost. <laughs> the next yeah, watch the can, <laughs> yeah, next watch will uh, bring Adelina on board. Um, what were you saying, Catalina? That you guys are troopers. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what's up with these other watch 12? Oh, man, enough of these 8 to 12ers. I'm going to hype up a new watch now. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. No, we, everybody deserves and needs their rest. I, I took a very nice nap earlier today, so 
Yeah, feeling, you did. Feeling pretty rested, and uh, yeah, I was out in the lounge for a while. I woke up and said, "Oh." Yeah, I came off watch a little late, and you were just you were just passed out, looking super comfortable. <laughs> So I have many favorite spots around the ship. It could be a whole uh, ship activity. Look for look for Daniel napping. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's good times. Yeah, I took another nice uh, nap on on the monkey deck as well above the bridge uh, before we before we enjoyed the incredible hula. And yeah. uh, Ava ceremony and nice quiet spot late in the evening. I'll probably head back up there after watch, check out the stars. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Might even fall asleep up there. Call it a night. <laughs> you can't quit now. Nope. Thank you, Internet. <laughs> well, we're not quitting, but our watch is over. So <laughs> Just about, yeah. So good night. Oh. <laughs> good night, Internet. <laughs> no, we love you guys. Uh, you know, regardless of uh, whether we get to know your names or, or not, you know, we just uh, cherish the participation and the company and the fellow, you know, explorers coming online with us at Nautilus Live and on YouTube. It, it means a lot to us. I know many of you have been following Nautilus for much longer than I've known about Nautilus. Uh, You've voyaged into the deep sea many times um, with the ship and its crew, so we appreciate you and all that you bring. But it is time, time to say good night and ahui ho. It is bedtime. Uh, until we meet it's again. Been a, it's been a busy day, so. Yeah. And then it's going to get a little bit busier for the rest of the expedition. So, <laughs> so we're going to have, a, yeah, we're going to have a pretty full lab. And that's always a good thing. So. I, I foresee a uh, wet lab cam being on the quad oh, yeah. in the near future. <laughs> oh, action. Yes, action in the so wet definitely. lab. <laughs> yeah, I've been up almost 16 hours today, so. Wow, Oof. well. Definitely, definitely ready for a little rest. We're uh, about to take another wrap here on the on the winch. It's uh, looking good. We're past the three and a half kilometer mark in depth. Nearly uh, two thousand meters above the Kaga. And, uh, <laughs> oh, viewers online say there's no cookies in the galley. Who ate all the Oreos already? Jeez, come on, <laughs> come on, save some for the big guy. Trust me, you do not want to hear me sleeping on SPL. <laughs> you probably wouldn't hear anything, but just in case I snore myself awake, you don't want to hear oh. that. <laughs> we don't mind. I mind. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we're all open books here. If you're just tuning in now, uh, you can go ahead and pre-order your book, Isotope Stories. Oh <laughs> just send a donation into Ocean Exploration Trust. And uh, almost a guarantee, it'll be a number one bestseller on somebody's list. And uh, we're, we're excited, looking forward to that. And um, yeah. About it. There's no cookies in the galley. The internet's ruining my night. Mm -hmm. That's just, well, that just means it's not cookie time. Cookie time will be later. Uh, I hope so. I am going to go scrounging for snacks after this, though. It's a long, long path till Sunday when we get more ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> snore cam. Yeah, we should put the snore cam somewhere on there. No. That would have been on me in the lounge, but thankfully there are no. Uh, there are no cameras down there. Can sleep in peace. Yep. Yeah. 
relative peace. Oh yeah. I don't know, some puzzling, some light puzzling going on, and uh, some other some other activity, but it's all all just helps. Yep. Yeah, one of our uh, crew brought some some of those uh, wooden laser cut puzzles on board, and uh, we've uh, been through I think three of them now, and I think I saw a fourth getting set out earlier this evening. So. Uh, oh goodness. Yeah, it's 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 a team effort to uh, put these together. It's it's been a lot of fun. I'm gonna start doing my part and just uh, stealing a piece in secret uh, <laughs> early on in the endeavor and frustrating everyone's efforts. You would do that, wouldn't you? <laughs> does it, it does sound like something I would do. After after I said it, I said actually it sounds exactly like me. Never done it, but it sounds like something I would do. All all right um it looks like we're doing at least a front row watch change i hope uh 12 to 4 back row is asleep me too so me too so they're all rested up for tomorrow so all right the all after right, after party is starting jacob's in the house brought a dan i'm sure it's going to get wild in here you guys enjoy good night yeah. and aloha good night, good night folks